We've just landed in Singapore, our 22nd country. When we first started our travels in 2020, we visited Thailand and then ended up in Cambodia for seven months. Since then, we've been unable to travel through Southeast Asia due to all the restrictions. We finally made our way back and today we'll be exploring Singapore for the first time and giving you all of our first impressions. that we've learned about Singapore so far is how it's such a sustainable and green city. Even though it's a massive city with tons of skyscrapers and lots of traffic, there is so much greenery here. Nearly 50% of the entire country is green space. Even if it's not a large park or a running path, they have tree-lined streets and even rooftop gardens to hang out at. We're here at Design Orchard, which is just across the street from our hotel. And it's a cute little cafe and art studio, and they have tons of green space outside. So even though we're right in the city, there's still little pockets of space that we can get out of the hustle and bustle and the heat, because there's lots of shade here, which I greatly appreciate. <laughs> it is a scorcher out today. It's only 89 degrees, but it feels like 102 degrees, and the humidity is like 67%, but feels like about 1,000%. Whew. <laughs> yeah. People carry around umbrellas a lot here. Obviously, it just creates shade for you while you're walking, but also it rains here all the time and somewhat unexpectedly. Oh my gosh. Singapore has designated smoking areas pretty much everywhere that you are outside. So if you see just a line of people, most likely they are all smoking. Like, wow. <laughs> we both got very hungry and we finally got to the restaurant we were trying to get to, but in Singapore, it's not always just seamless to get to where you're going. I guess in the US, we're just so used to having every crosswalk as an opportunity to cross the street. But here, it's like fenced off and you kind of have to go the long way around sometimes. So it can be like 15 minutes to get somewhere that's like five minutes away. Strangely enough, Singapore feels like the New York of Asia. And since I was getting borderline hangry, we figured we'd come to one of my favorite New York spots, Shake Shack, because they have one. Mm. When walking around Singapore, sometimes you just get lost in the fact that you're actually in Southeast Asia. And it's just subtle things. For example, when you look down, the sidewalks are clean, they're level everywhere, and they're very wide to accommodate for a ton of foot traffic. And then when you look up, you're used to seeing like a nest of wires in Southeast Asia, so big sometimes that you can hear the electricity running through it. But here in Singapore, you don't see anything at all. If Singapore is New York, then Orchard Road is definitely Fifth Avenue. We are going to be heading down to the Marina Bay, and luckily the easiest way to get there is the public transportation, which is not always the case in Southeast Asia. But the MRT system is the subway, and it's awesome and super easy and nice and air-conditioned. love using Google Maps to get around on public transportation. It's so easy. It tells you exactly which direction you're going, what exit to take, and here they have all the exits marked by like A, B, C, or D. And it says exit on exit A right now, so we can walk more inside, because it's so freaking hot outside. I love how easy it is. You just tap your credit card when you enter, and you tap when you leave, and it automatically charges it. There's no need to get a card and fill a card with the MRT. It's amazing. 
Another way we thought about getting around town, which is really easy, but I'm glad it didn't work out, are ride-sharing bikes. The ones that we tried to use were like half broken and it's only 87 degrees, but it feels like 100. So being inside with air conditioning as much as possible, very helpful. And then there's also grabs, just like Uber. Pretty popular here, but it's definitely one of the more expensive ways to get around Singapore. It's really nice because everybody speaks English here. It's actually one of the four official languages in Singapore. The other two are Malay, which is from Malaysia, just north of Singapore, Mandarin, and Tamil, which is from southern India and Sri Lanka. And we've seen a lot of signs in all the languages, but we can always, always find English, which is so helpful. Look at we just, I just came across the uh, F1 night racing track. Alicia, turn around. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> that car is literally so expensive. Yes. Cars here are bonkers. The F1 night race is actually the first night race of the F1 series and it happens here in Singapore every year. I believe it's in September and everything is gonna be super, super expensive in town, so we will not be here for it. Singapore is consistently in the top 10 list of most expensive city and countries in the whole entire world. And one of the major reasons for it being so expensive is the price of cars. Since Singapore is only 277 square miles, it's a rather small country. And in order to keep traffic at a more manageable level, they limit the number of cars that are allowed on the road. In order to purchase a car, you also need to purchase a certificate of entitlement or a COE. And oftentimes those are just as expensive as the car, if not more expensive than the car. For example, if you were to buy a $15,000 Toyota, which is a pretty inexpensive car, it will cost you up to $95,000 with the COE, additional fees, taxes, insurance, etc, etc. And since Mercedes-Benz is the second most popular brand that's sold in Singapore, they are not paying only $96,000 for their cars. It's more like a minimum of $200,000. Wow, it's so pretty out here. Look at the gardens by the bay. Oh my gosh. It feels like Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> it does. This is the track. This is like the Formula One track that they race on. What a freaking great view. <laughs> and people are just running, walking, and biking on it. That's amazing. That is so cool. That is incredible. But like a smart, innovative way to like make it still useful. Yes, that is so true. Are you ready? I'll give you the countdown. Okay. Body mark. <laughs> Get set. <laughs> Go. Oh, it's so competitive. But he comes from behind. like <laughs> 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 I think you won. <laughs> yeah, you totally did. Oh my gosh, the winner. <laughs> Alicia. Thanks for letting me win, babe. <laughs> is there anybody you would like to thank right now? What was that thing that you said? I'd just like to thank the airlines <laughs> for letting us fly at this time <laughs> so I could go to Singapore and win the F1 night race. <laughs> you crushed it. You crushed it. Good job. This is Newton Food Center, one of the most popular hawker markets. And we are looking for a man with pink hair to get Stingray from. And if we see any long lines, then that's usually a good sign. So let's check it out. All right. Stingray. Yes, please. Have you heard the word? We'll eat somewhere in here, though. Yes, okay. anywhere you like. Yeah. You find a table, you tell me the table or number, okay. I will send to you. Okay, perfect. So hawker centers are these large food courts almost. Some are open air, some are indoors, and they just have a ton of stalls called hawker stalls that are individually run and serve sometimes similar dishes, sometimes totally different dishes. And they were actually added to UNESCO's representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2020. Basically, 
food is a huge deal in Singapore, whether it's really high-class three-star restaurants or it's a hawker market where you can get a meal for under $5. Note, we haven't found a under $5 meal yet, but we're starting with the barbecue stingray, which is a recommendation from my friend Bree. Her friend Stacy told us to look for the guy with the pink hair, so I'm excited to try it. This is our first time having stingray, and I guess I was kind of expecting it to be super rubbery, like squid almost, because of what they look like and how, what they feel like if you've ever touched a stingray. But this just flaked right apart. That is so good. It's kind of spicy, which won't be spicy for Nate because of like the barbecue sauce. It's honestly just like any other fish and the lime on top. It's like almost Mexican flavored. Mmm. Such a good recommendation. Okay, it's kind of spicy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the perfect. It's like two pieces. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that okay? Yeah, what the heck though? Look at that. What is that? I don't know. Is that just the meat? It looks like tubes. <laughs> like, is that the gills? Does it taste the same? Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, you can pull it with that. In most places, they take credit card, but on occasion, you get the cash only. The cash here in Singapore feels very silky. And one thing I love about every other country except for the US is that currency is a different color for every different dollar bill. It's so much easier to track and keep separate. Our first impressions of Singapore are, we love it. If we could afford to live here, I would say we'd pack our bags in a heartbeat, but they're already packed and they're here. <laughs> we would just stay, but we still have a ton of vlogs planned here in Singapore. But this is a great start, so if you enjoyed hanging out and seeing Singapore with us today, hit the like button below, and if you want to stamp your passport with us again, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Good night. And this giant big blue bird. Did you say blue bird? <laughs> I did, it's yellow though. I'm not colorblind, I swear. Although Alicia has thought I have been at times. I wonder why. Look at his outfits. Look at my outfits? That's just me. For the Ferris wheel. Oh, I said carousel. Bonkers. <laughs> Love it. We're starting with the barbecue stingray. Much better. What are you doing? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's so good. This would be good for the home.